Hello, and welcome to this demonstration of IBM's DataPower Operations Dashboard, or DPOD for short. In this video we will demonstrate how you can use DPOD to resolve some of the most common problems programmers face when trying to invoke an API Connect service. We will do this by presenting five scenarios. In these scenarios we will show how to discover early failing invocations, OAuth errors, and client ID errors. We will also show how to use DPOD's payload capture feature to discover invalid message data, and how to utilize DPOD's variable capture feature to investigate problems occurring during API policy execution. In all of the following scenarios, we assume that the API Connect service has already been deployed, but we have not actually worked with it yet. In each scenario we will show the initial error, and show how DPOD can be used to quickly pinpoint the source of the problem. In the first scenario, let's say we tried to access a service we've never called before, and got a 404 response, as we see here. For exactly such cases, DPOD provides a very handy tool called the Early Fail Dashboard. This dashboard gives you a bird's eye view of all the calls which have failed before going into the execution stage. To see this, let's go to the Transactions page, and click the Early Failing tab above. In this case, the easiest way to find our invocation would be to filter results by the URL we tried to call. Indeed, we see we got early failing errors for this call. Going into the transaction page, under error analysis, we can easily see the source of the problem, the URL was not found, meaning that we were actually calling the wrong URL. To resolve this, we can either contact the person who has given us the incorrect URL, or go to the API, connect portal, where we will find the service's endpoint URL. Once we have the right URL, another common source of invocation errors is OAuth related. The next two scenarios will demonstrate this. In the first of these scenarios, let's say we are trying to get an OAuth token, but when we called the OAuth API, we get an HTTP 401 error response, as you can see here. To investigate this, again we should go to the early failing page in DPOD. This time, let's search by the API name and the client IP. When collecting transaction logs, DPOD analyzes multiple log messages in order to give you a single, coherent indication of the source of the problem. In this case, under error analysis we see a simple message, that the OAuth scope is not allowed. It is now easy to resolve the problem. We should go to the API Connect portal and check what are the valid scopes for this service. Let's look at another OAuth scenario. Say we get our OAuth token and called the API Connect service, but this time we got HTTP code 403, with a message text, forbidden, as you can see in this screen capture. Once more we use the early failing dashboard, and DPOD's error analysis feature. This time we will filter by the error message and go into the transaction. Now, in the error analysis of the faulty call we can see what happened. The scope is not authorized for the resource. Meaning, that even though our token contains a scope which is valid by itself, this scope does not grant access for the API we were trying to call. To resolve this, we need an authorized scope and a new OAuth token. If we want to know which scopes are authorized for this API, we can use the API Connect portal. In the next scenario we can see how to investigate a different sort of error. This time we got an HTTP 500 response, with a more detailed message saying that the request is missing a mandatory field. This message, as well as the HTTP code, tell us that the problem has occurred during the execution of the service, and that there is a problem with the message structure, but we don't know exactly which field is missing. In this case, the early, failing page is not relevant. To investigate such issues, we need to look at the transaction processing itself, and specifically at the message payload. To do this we need to turn on message payload capture. This can be done quite easily via the DPOD console. We can go to the Investigate page, to the Payload Capture section, and create a new subscription for the appropriate device and domain. In this case, we've already activated the capture earlier, so we will cancel the new subscription. We should note that active payload captures may have a significant impact on performance, and so they should only be activated for a limited duration. After we've started payload capture, we should invoke the service again, and go to the Investigate page. Now let's filter by the error message we got request is missing a mandatory field, and go into the faulty transaction. We see in the error analysis that the problem is that the property customer ID is missing. Now, if we go into the payload section, we see that there is a field called customer, instead of the required customer ID field name. So we can now surmise what is the source of the problem, 
someone had apparently entered the wrong field name, customer instead of customer ID. We can now try to change the field name that is called, or check why this mistake was made in the first place. In any case, we can see that using dpod has made investigating such a problem very easy. The last scenario shows how dpod can help in cases where even though technically everything looks okay, you still get an unexpected response from the service. In this case, the URL is correct, the message structure is valid, and the call finished successfully in terms of HTTP codes. However, when we call the service, we get the message, you do not have enough money in your account, even though the service user told us that this should not be happening. To investigate such issues it is usually not enough to use payload capture. Instead, we need to activate a unique feature of dpod, called variable capture. This feature makes it possible to track service execution for API Connect APIs at the code level, in a very detailed way. By using variable capture, we can see precisely which steps were executed by the API, and in what order. Most importantly, we can see the values of all the variables which the API uses, at each step of its execution flow. To turn on variable capture, we will go to investigate, select, policy variable capture, and create a new capture for the decide, catalog and API. In this case we've already started the capture earlier, so we won't complete the action. We should note that only two variable captures can run on every gateway device at any given time. Once you turn them on, they will run indefinitely. Since variable capture may impact service performance, leaving variable captures running might cause unexpected problems. Therefore, we recommend that once you've finished your investigation, close all open variable captures, especially in production environments. Now that we've turned on variable capture, let's say we called the service again. Let's go to the transactions page and filter by API name and version, and go into one of the transactions. Now let's scroll down to the execution flow diagram. In this diagram, we can see all the processing steps which were actually performed by the API, as it processed this particular transaction. So, when for example there was an if conditional statement in the API, we will only see the condition which was executed. Let's now click one of the policies to zoom in, and see more details. By clicking any of the policies, represented here by colored squares, or by navigating using the keyboard arrows, we can see the values of all the context variables at each step of the execution. When we get to the step called get customer balance, we see a value of minus 99,999. This doesn't make much sense, as balances are never allowed to go so low. This, we can be relatively sure, is the source of the problem. We can now surmise that there was some data integrity problem, either in the API Connect service code, or in a called service which returned the current account balance. To resolve the problem, we should investigate further, contact the programmer of the API, check the called service, and so on. In any event, as we can again see, Dpod had provided us with a quick and easy way of investigating even quite deeply hidden problems, which reside in our APIs. This concludes our demonstration of using Dpod to resolve common issues in invoking API Connect services. We hope you found this demonstration useful. Please look at our other videos for more scenarios, instructions and features.